Chapter 9 It's not very big, but it works, Drew said as he opened the door to his apartment. He let Bethany go first. If I had known I was having company, I would have cleaned. Mentally, he gave a wince at the current state it was in. Dishes were in the sink. He knew his fridge was nearly empty. His bathroom had not fared well with three guys using the place. Drew did not like cleaning much. However, he disliked Bethany seeing his place like this even less. Drew remembered her rich condo and how expensive everything had looked. His garage sale find furniture was not exactly measuring up. The couch had not even come from a garage sale. It had been sitting out, abandoned for garbage day when Drew had spotted it and dragged it home. Thank goodness it did not smell like raccoon pee anymore. Everything is in one room. Bethany looked around curiously, setting her overnight bag on the small table. Everything except the bathroom, yes. Drew put her luggage case beside the bed. I will clear a couple of drawers and change the sheets. Where am I going to sleep? frowned Bethany. There's no guest room. I will take the couch, said Drew. It was going to be uncomfortable. He was not looking forward to it. Drew quickly cleared some space in the tall boy dresser so that she would have somewhere to put her stuff. It was a good thing he did not have much of a wardrobe. Drew managed to condense four drawers into two. The fifth drawer was empty anyways. There was more than enough room in the small closet beside his shelf as well. I am smaller. I should sleep on the couch. Bethany eyed it with a small measure of caution. There was a pretty and colorful afghan over the sofa, yet that did not hide the fact that some stuffing was coming through on one end. That is not how I treat ladies in this apartment, Drew said calmly. He grabbed the only other set of sheets that he owned thanks to Jana. At the time, he thought it was an odd thing to need two sets of sheets when you could just throw them through on laundry day. Now he blessed his sister's foresight as he stripped his bed. Do you have company here often? Bethany said lightly as she looked out the window. Her condo had floor-to-ceiling glass with a view of the river. He had two small and outdated windows that looked onto a narrow alley, the view being the brick building beside them. At least there was no other windows peering back at them. I prefer not to. I've always seen this as my own personal sanctuary. Drew stuffed a pillow into a pillowcase. And I am invading it. Bethany fiddled with her purse strap. No. Drew paused as he pulled the sheet over the bed. I invited you here. You're more than welcome to stay until you feel safe enough to return home. My father pays the bills on the condo, frowned Bethany. What happens if he does not pay them? Can he pay them from jail? I'm sure the bills will keep getting paid, replied Drew. At least they would until the FBI came in and froze the accounts during their investigation. However, just to be on the safe side, if you want anything specifically from the condo, we could pick it up or have it put in storage. I know you probably think I'm spoiled. Bethany had a self-depreciating smile. He pays all my bills. I have some excess money from my position with the orchestra that I generally give to charities. He is in a position to be able to be generous with you. It must be nice. Drew shrugged. It was not for him to judge. It was... She frowned as she thought about the fact that her father had been willing to stand by and let her die. I cannot rely on him any more. I'm going to have to figure out how to get by on my income from the orchestra. That can wait for another day. Drew put the covers on the bed. You're tired. While you're napping, I can get a little cleaning done. You can put your stuff away later if you want. She was fatigued, Bethany admitted. She picked up her overnight bag. I will just get changed. Drew nodded and decided to get the dishes done. They could air dry while she slept. Then he would just have to do the bathroom as quietly as he could so that she could sleep. That was all he would be able to manage without disturbing her. Bethany stepped into the small bathroom. There was no bathtub, just a single shower stall. Everything was small and utilitarian. She looked at her pale reflection in the mirror. She had rings under her eyes from the past few days. It was a good sleep. They should disappear. At least, she hoped so. Bethany changed into her pajamas. She had managed to shower at the hospital with assistance. She was too tired to protest when the nurse had ushered her into the bathroom. Now, she was glad that she had taken it. This way, Bethany would not look entirely disgusting to Drew. 
not that she should care what he thought of her. All he was doing was keeping her safe. It was part of his job, she told herself. He probably just saw her as an assignment. Just because she found him attractive and liked him did not mean that he felt the same way towards her. It was all temporary. Bethany gathered her things. She had a rueful glance at the novel she elected to grab and stuff into her overnight bag. Bethany had not finished it yet. It was a romance. She had to admit she was addicted to them. Heroic guys were always her favorite. Drew was certainly the heroic type. The way he had taken off after the criminals when she was on the boat. It was his job, but he had not hesitated at all. Bethany believed him when he said he would protect her. Drew was the type of guy who would go all out. He was also tender and kind. He was more than understanding when she had her breakdown on the boat. Drew had been skeptical of her memories, but he still investigated. He had still come and saved her life. Bethany admitted she was probably romanticizing him a little. She was in danger of wishfully thinking he might be her hero, and that was not the case. He did have a temper. He was rough around the edges. He lacked charm. Drew made her feel an attraction that she had not felt with any other man. Her parents would not like him. Then again, her father was not such a paragon of virtue. Her brother Edward was in Taiwan. They weren't particularly close. Edward had always disliked that Bethany allowed her parents so much control over her life. Edward had asked her how she could stand to not live her own life. Before he left, he had told her that she should do what made her happy, not what other people had expected of her. She had been heavily medicated, Bethany reflected ruefully. That was why she did as her parents had always expected. It was hard to make decisions when you were constantly being told that you are not capable of making them, that you are not mentally strong enough. Bethany looked at her reflection in the mirror. It was past time she started making her own decisions and live with the consequences, good or bad. She rummaged through her overnight bag. Exchanging the cumbersome pajama top for a dark camisole, she looked in the mirror again. Better. She was decently covered, and if Drew was looking, at least he would not see that ugly, shapeless pajama top with its long sleeves and buttons. Maybe, if they were in close proximity long enough, he might become attracted to her. Bethany would deal with those consequences, good and bad, if it happened. There was a knock on the door. Beth, did you fall asleep? She stuffed her pajama top into her bag and opened the door. Bethany could not help but blush. So much for being sexy. Now Bethany just felt embarrassed. She looked at the floor. No, sorry. Hey, Drew said as he leaned against the wall. I just wanted to make sure you were okay. It's been a long day for you. Bethany nodded and made her way past him. Drew had turned down the covers on the bed for her. It was so sweet. Do you want anything to eat or drink? Drew tried not to hover. It was not easy in the small apartment. No, thank you, I will be fine. Bethany gave him a small smile. She showed him her book. I will probably just read a little and then go to sleep. Okay. Drew backed away, hands in his pockets. I'm going to clean the bathroom. If you need anything, let me know. Bethany nodded. She waited until he left before crawling into bed. She propped up in the book, but could not concentrate as she listened to him trying to be quiet. Drew closed the door to the bathroom softly behind him. He leaned against it, muttering, Because that wasn't awkward. With a sigh, he grabbed the cleaning stuff under the sink and set to work. It was too bad she saw the apartment so gross. Once he cleaned it, Drew knew it would still not be up to her standards, but the place was old and he could only do so much. He wondered why he was so concerned over her opinion of his apartment. It was not like he was trying to impress her or anything. Crud. Drew leaned back and looked at himself in the mirror. He was trying to impress her. He cared about her opinion of his place. Double crud. Drew grimaced. Somehow, Bethany was worming her way into his life. She was attractive. She made him want to protect her from everything. She had a habit of looking at him like he was some sort of hero. It was addictive. Drew knew that was also a bad idea. Once this was all over, she would be out the door and back to her regular life without a backward glance. He tamped down on any feelings he might have for Bethany. 
she could not regard him as anything more than a cop willing to protect her during some uncertainty in her life. She was just using him. He had offered to be used. That was the stupidest part. Normally, cops did not do that. They did not open their own homes to protect ordinary citizens. Drew was so screwed. Here he was cleaning for her, scrubbing the sink, the toilet, and what was that on the floor? Ew. He pulled a face. Really? Seriously? Could Cotter and Ramsley not aim? Drew sighed and got to work. Drew's phone rang. He grabbed it quickly, darting a glance at the bed. Bethany was sleeping, and he did not want her to wake up. Drew ducked into the hallway a moment. Colburn here, he answered automatically, leaving the door to the apartment meant open an inch. The last thing he wanted was to get locked out, and have to wake Bethany to let him in. He would look really competent if that happened. I have laundry. Do you want yours done? His sister asked. Drew frowned suspiciously. Since when do you offer laundry service? You're always telling me to do my own if I ask you. I decided to be nice, replied Jana. I don't buy it. Drew knew his sister. She taught him how to do his own laundry when he was a teen, then had never done a single load for him again. You are my baby brother. I love you, Jana said sweetly. You are my big sis, and I love you. However, Molson's the baby, not me, responded Drew. What do you really want? Okay, I want information, sighed Jana, and Drew smiled as he could imagine her rolling her eyes. What sort of information? questioned Drew. I want to know all about the girl in your apartment. Jana was distracted a moment by Jenny. Put that away, honey. I do not want your sister to get into it. Who says I have anyone in my apartment? Drew had not told anyone besides Miguel that he was taking Bethany home. Miguel was still on shift, so he should not have spilled the beans just yet. Mrs. Needles, your neighbor, commented Jana. She spies on you. Drew looked down the hallway. Sure enough, Mrs. Needles' door was open an inch, and the little elderly lady was peering out. The police department should hire her for surveillance. You get Mrs. Needles to call you whenever I have visitors? Only the female ones, replied Jana. Let's face it, you don't often have visitors. Miguel called you, didn't he? Drew leaned against the wall. He had seen his brother-in-law's surprise when he had put his hand on Bethany's back to escort her out of the police station. What information could you possibly want when you already have had the rundown from him? First, I wanted to know if it was really her, Jana said smugly. Now I know it is her. Drew sighed loudly. Second, I want to know just how involved you are with her. It sounds like the two of you are in deep. I want to know if you know what you are doing. Jana softened her tone. Miguel is worried. That makes me worried. Jana, I know your heart is in the right place, but that is still not worth my laundry. Drew tried to smile. He did not like worrying his sister. She worried enough being the wife and sister of cops. Besides, you know me. I never get in deep. Drew hoped he was not lying. He did not lie to his sister, either. Jana had a way of homing in on the truth, so there was no point. You have never taken a case home before, either, Jana pointed out. True, Drew said easily. I want to meet her, stated Jana. That was not a good idea. Drew hesitated. He tried to find an excuse quickly so she would not... Drew? Crud. Drew closed his eyes. Jana would know he was trying to put her off, which meant that she would know that he did not want her to meet Bethany, because then Jana might see through him and his protestations of not being involved emotionally. She is tired. She's been through a lot. If you talk to Miguel, you would know that someone made an attempt on her life, and she's still working through that. I will throw in groceries, Jana bribed him. You know I am going to come up there anyways. We live in the same building. You can't avoid this, Drew. The door to the apartment opened, and a curious Bethany looked out at him. Even just getting up from a nap, she was beautiful. Drew's breath caught in his throat as he took in her sleepy gaze. Who is that? My sister, Drew answered. She's bringing groceries tomorrow afternoon. What is your guest going to eat tonight? You guys could come for dinner, offered Jana. 
That is nice. We will see you tomorrow. Drew ended the call. He was not going to subject Bethany to Jana just yet. She still looked tired. What would you prefer for takeout? Chinese? Pizza? Subs? My treat. Bethany had never had takeout. Her mother had drilled into her that to keep a womanly figure, one did not eat takeout meals. They were considered too fatty and greasy, without proper nutritional standards, according to Constance Searson. Bethany looked at Drew, hopefully. Can we get all three? Hungry? Drew smiled, and it took Bethany a moment to register that he was even talking, her mind still focused on how handsome he was when he smiled. It made her heart skip a couple of beats. They went back inside the apartment, and Drew pulled out the takeout menus of some local places. He and Bethany discussed the merits of each. Mostly, she deferred to his opinion except when it came to pineapple. I do not care what you say, Bethany said stubbornly. Pineapple should never be cooked. It is good, especially on pizza. Drew was amused by her. It's called a Hawaiian. You can have what you want, but I am not eating it, Bethany replied. I have had pineapple ham once. It was disgusting. Not the same, insisted Drew. This is a lot of food. Bethany looked at their list in concern. Whatever we don't eat, we can freeze and have later, Drew said easily as he called in the last order. Can I make a confession? Bethany asked tentatively. Sure, Drew watched her curiously. I am not that hungry. She bit her lip. Then why did we just order all this food? Frowned Drew. I've never had takeout. I didn't know what to get. Bethany shrugged, a little embarrassed. You do know that there is Mexican, Indian, Italian, and a whole slew of other takeout options, right? Drew leaned against the counter. She was so innocent and sheltered. For some reason, it made her even more desirable. Really? Bethany looked at him in interest. We are not ordering them all tonight, he said firmly. Bethany smiled. I was not expecting to. Shall we watch some television while we wait for the food? Drew asked. You can pick, as long as it's not opera. I do not think I could handle that. Could we watch the game? She offered. Bethany, you do not need to watch the game if you don't want to. Drew did not want her to feel like she had to be the perfect guest. We can watch whatever you would like. Good. Then we are watching the Yankees play the Blue Jays, Bethany said confidently as she went to the couch and grabbed the remote. She knew the schedule. Drew looked at her with new appreciation as he sat down beside her. Bethany had pulled her legs up, elbows on her knees, while she sorted through the channels. She had a smile of satisfaction as she found the baseball game. If he was not in love with her already, Drew thought he might have just fallen. Crud. Jana was going to be able to sniff that out in two seconds flat. She was an amazing investigator. He was going to have to pull himself together when she came tomorrow. The buzzer went off. Drew, thankful for the distraction, went to verify who was there. He left Bethany locked inside the apartment, choosing to go to the lobby to pick up the food. It was easier to make certain that Bethany remained secure and safe. He waited for all three orders, then hauled the mess of food upstairs. Not having an elevator was a pain, but the building's lone elevator had been broken since long before Drew had started renting here. For some reason, he had an apartment on the fourth floor. Jana and Miguel were on the first floor, which was a good thing, considering they had three kids. It did not take long to divide the spoils and argue the pizza again. Drew liked nudging Bethany verbally just to see what she might say. Eventually, he convinced her to at least try the pizza. She took two bites chewed, and handed the slice back. Drew laughed at her expression. Cooked pineapple was not her thing. Chinese food was. They both gorged themselves, watching the game. At some point in the eighth inning, Bethany was slumped against him, sleeping. Drew wrapped an arm around her and watched the rest of the game. He found himself liking her even more. Not just a physical attraction, it was learning about her and liking that he was finding about the facets of her personality. It helped that she smelled really good. Something was coconut in it. At the end of the game, he shut off the television. Carefully picking her up, Drew managed to get her back into bed without waking Bethany. He pulled the blankets up over her, stole the extra pillow, and headed back to the couch. Jana arrived, as expected, the next afternoon. She handed the baby to Drew. While you look after your nephew and do our laundry... 
I will chit-chat with Bethany. Drew automatically took Miguel Jr. The two-month-old blinked up at him. Hi, Jana. Nice to see you. Would you like to meet Bethany Searson? Bethany, this is my bossy sister, Jana. She's married to Miguel. Stop being cheeky, Jana reprimanded him. She snuck a look at Bethany, who was watching Drew with the baby. Yep, the girl had it bad. Bethany had that. I am holding my breath because he is so handsome and he knows how to hold a baby properly, so that totally makes him relationship slash family man material look. Jana used her children mercilessly to see what a woman was interested in when it came to her brother. Most of Drew's previous relationships had just been temporary physical relationships. Drew was too handsome for his own good. He also did not have the best disposition. However, he was great with kids. Even the most stubborn woman's heart melted when they saw Drew with a baby. If Drew was in as deep as Miguel suspected, Jana was going to make certain Bethany Searson was the right girl for her brother. Your mom is in a mood, Drew told the baby, who gurgled up at him. He totally agrees with me. He has gas. Jana rolled her eyes and held out a key. Go away. Groceries? Drew raised an eyebrow. After we ladies make a list. Jana said sweetly. Drew took the key to her apartment. You owe me. No, I don't. Jana smiled and watched him leave. She closed the door. Hi, Bethany said a little uncertainly, still stunned at the ease in which Drew had looked after the baby. Somehow, his attractiveness had gone up a notch. Bethany did not even know that was possible. She was just as beautiful as Miguel had mentioned, Jana thought. It was a good thing Miguel's taste ran to dark-haired, short woman with bossy attitudes. One woman in particular. Otherwise, Jana might have felt a little jealous. Hi, let's have coffee while you tell me about yourself. What would you like to know? Bethany asked cautiously. She did not generally have heart-to-heart -heart talks with women. Bethany really did not have any friends. Not that she had not longed for some. It just had not happened. She was reserved. It was hard to be friendly when she was not self-confident. She supposed she probably came off as a bit of a snob sometimes as well, simply because she was too shy to mingle with others. What about your friends, your family, you in general? Jana smiled and started a fresh pot of coffee. Let me start. I am a cop. I've been married to Miguel for eight years. Drew introduced us since he and Miguel were friends first. We have two girls, Jenny, who is six, and Kara, who is five. And you've already seen baby Miguel, Jr. Besides Drew, we have a younger brother named Molson. I am the oldest. Jana pulled out a couple of mugs out of the cupboard. She was at home in Drew's kitchen. Your turn. Let's see. Bethany thought about it. I am the daughter of Ted and Constance Searson. I have an older brother, Edward, who is in Taiwan. I am a member of the city orchestra, and I teach ballet. Jana grabbed a plastic container out of her purse. She had made squares and had brought some. Setting them on the table, she looked at Bethany's attire. Jana might not know the brands, but Bethany was wearing designer stuff. She had perfect makeup and hair. She looked like a model. Jana was frumpy in her mom sweats with no makeup and not even brushed hair in a ponytail. Bethany did not fit into their world. Jana wondered how long she might last. It all depended on how much she loved Drew. Why is your brother in Taiwan? Jana asked. He was dating a person that father and mother did not approve of. Edward chose to pursue his dreams overseas without their interference, Bethany explained. She remembered the arguments. Edward was a spoiled son. In the years he had been gone, he had finally grown up. The relationship did not last, but he's found his place in the world and married someone else. Would your parents approve of Drew? Jana asked casually as she sipped her coffee. Bethany gave a small smile. First, we're not dating. He is being kind enough to ensure my safety. Second, no, they would not approve of Drew. However, since my father may have attempted to kill me... I would say his opinion matters very little right now. What is your mom's opinion? Jana questioned. The fact that Bethany was willing to talk about a possible relationship with Drew meant that the thought had crossed her mind. 
Bethany recalled her date with Earl Milton. I think at this point, Mother just wants grandchildren. Edward does not have any children? No, Bethany shrugged. Nor do I think he will. He's too much of a free spirit. I do not think he would want the responsibility. Edward's artistic dreams had been a point of contention. He was determined to follow his craft. Ted Searson had been just as determined to have a son who followed in his footsteps. The result had been arguments and a final split in the family. Jana did not have to ask Bethany if she wanted children. She saw it in her face when Bethany had watched Drew with baby Miguel. "'What are your parents like?' asked Bethany. "'Our dad wants nothing to do with us, which is fine, because we want nothing to do with him,' grimaced Jana. "'Our mom is something different.' Drew and I prefer not to have any contact with her. Molson still sees her, although I'm not sure why. Is she difficult to deal with? Bethany was curious. She is mentally off the wall. Jana rolled her eyes. Wacko Margot should never have been in charge of children. One day she might be cool, let us get out of school and take us to a water park or to the zoo. The next day she was taking a hammer to the wall because she could hear voices of the roaches taunting her. It was a really interesting childhood. Bethany blinked. Oh. Thankfully, two out of three of us have grown up to be responsible, mature adults, shrugged Jana. I'm not sure I have too much hope for Molson anymore. That is too bad. Bethany decided to ask Drew about his brother later. You do know that it's not protocol for a police officer to take a victim of a crime into his home, right? Jana asked, raising an eyebrow. Drew could get into trouble for this. He could? I had no idea, frowned Bethany. He did not say anything. He wouldn't, Jana replied as she chewed on a square. Bethany hesitated, then took one as well. Jana was secretly glad to see her enjoy the treat. Drew is not like that. He has been very kind to me. Bethany recalled him letting her order whatever she wanted and picking out what to watch on television last night. She tried not to blush as she recalled that he had carried her to bed last night. I would not want him to get in any trouble. I suppose I will have to find someplace else to stay. Jana saw the slight blush. She had also seen the pillow on the couch. There was no way that Drew was sleeping comfortably on the couch, yet he was suffering through it, giving Bethany the huge bed. That meant he saw Bethany as someone to treat well. Drew was not rushing the girl. Jana liked that. She also liked that the two of them had feelings for each other and did not realize it yet. Do you like to cook? She asked Bethany. Thank you for listening to Chapter 9 of Love and Lies, Book 5 of the Ramsley Brothers series. If you enjoyed this chapter, please look for Chapter 10. Also, you can find my books on Amazon. They are on the Unlimited Kindle program, also on Kindle, paperback, and soon to Audible. Happy listening!